Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, allow me to thank my dear friend, Professor Dr. Klaus Tepfer, Executive Director of the Institute for Advanced Sustainability Studies and the Honorable Organizing Committee for inviting me to attend this first Global Soil Week in the beautiful city of Berlin. I like the theme of the conference because it reflects the importance of soil in the life of every one of us. The allocation of the week to the soil at the global level is very important, especially in the current international conditions, characterized by an increased risk of climate change, particularly related to the land degradation. I'm confident that the scientific level and competencies of participants in this conference will enable us to achieve good results and practical suggestions for the protection of the world's land against further deteriorations. Innovation-driven models for agricultural productivity need to be deployed. Solutions for land degradation, desertification, and soil erosion need to be developed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming from Qatar, a country in the Gulf area where the climate condition and the geological component have given a paradox of wealth in oil and gas and stiffness of desert and food security. My country has only 1% of the land under cultivation and has to import every year 90% of its agro-food products and has only 1.8 days of water autonomy. I have the next slide. In today's world, we are unfortunately accustomed to watch every year images of storming poor children, children and women dying out of hunger. We, countries which have means and resources, are also under threat by the complexity and the uncertainty of today's world food policies. That is unacceptable in the 21st century world. Having all that in mind, Qatar authorities come to the conclusion that actions and results are needed. In this context, we created by ourselves a national food security program, QRSP, which is today operational in the framework of Qatar Vision 2030. Qatar National Food Security Program will apply innovation and the implementation of sustainable infrastructure to overcome the natural constraints for enhancing our food security. And I will just explain our little bit of our program and the best way to do that in very short well is to show you this sustainability matrix that we have developed. Um, the two parts uh, on the left, you can see energy and water. And uh, uh, because our requirement of ours is that we do not use any fossil fuels, that it must be sustainable. So uh, we decided that it's going to be solar power. We are now uh, having uh, done studies to look at the solar map of our country. And it seems that the south will be uh, uh, the area where we will get uh, a large solar park that will give us the energy that we need to do uh, um, uh, the water uh, in the north. Uh, uh, in large amount of the desalination using reverse osmosis. And uh, to do that, we are going to be looking at a very near uh, uh, our industrial city, which is one of the largest in the world. But uh, by doing this combination, we are able to get a lot of efficiencies and uh, push down the cost of uh, producing water. Uh, the uh, other two pillars, okay, which is the uh, production and processing, uh, farms and food, is more complicated. But uh, uh, we found out that uh, three important elements in this are the, uh, uh, and it came to us just you know, by looking around and uh, finding that logistics will gonna play a very important role. And not, not only logistics, but it opened an opportunity for, to do other things by doing a soil enrichment plant and uh, also develop a strategic storage. And logistic is now viable because Qatar is embarking on a large um, railway network and Deutsche Bahn is now uh, doing the design and uh, hopefully within 10 years, we will have a comprehensive uh, railway network and that will op open opportunities that did not exist before. Um, today's world is globalized, 
and any national plan has to be interrelated with regional and international actors. Qatar alone will not be able to guarantee its food security in uh, an efficient and rational manner. Responding and adequately to the challenges and risk related to food security in our country and all of trial land countries needs a new approach with specific result-oriented and innovative institution. And um, in the state of Qatar, we think that this goal be met through the establishment of a global trial land alliance, GDLA, that would address the specific problems of arid and semi-arid countries. The GDLA is envisioned to be a collaborative undertaking by the countries most severely affected by trial land challenges to combat their common threats, create new solutions to their common food security problems, and provide mutual assistance in terms of extraordinary need. The mission of the GDLA would be to adopt joint measures to mitigate members' food security vulnerabilities, develop capabilities to respond to members' food security crisis, improve members' food security policies and planning, engage in joint research and technological innovation relevant to the Alliance members' agriculture, water, energy use needs, and share knowledge and the best practice among member, member countries. Since we presented this concept of GDLA to international community, we have received numerous support, not only from the countries in Thailand, but also UN agencies, multilaterals, and international organizations. In September, uh, we had uh, last, uh, in September, in the UN General Assembly, uh, our second or third side event. And uh, the UN General Secretary, Ban Ki-moon, uh, had the opening, uh, sesh, uh, opening speech, and uh, we were very appreciative of that, and uh, because that strong support will really help us to move that along. Uh, we, uh, right now, we have 17, con 17 countries gathered together in Doha to discuss the founding process of the organization. We do expect that all the, those potential members, countries, will sign on the final treaty by the first half of 2013. In conclusion, I wish success for our meeting and I thank you for listening.